Today we're looking at lake turnover and stratification and how these events affect fish. We'll start in the middle of summer when deeper lakes tend to separate into several layers based on temperature and density. Just like oil and water resist mixing because of their different densities, layers of water with different temperatures will act the same way. Lakes that are deeper than about 25 feet tend to reliably separate into three layers during the summer season, which is called stratification. Water is most dense at 39 degrees Fahrenheit, so this water accumulates near the bottom, and the warm air and summer sun heat up the water near the top. The warmer it gets above 39 degrees, the less dense it becomes. The difference in density between these layers prevents them from mixing. This warm water closer to the surface forms the upper layer called the epilimnion. This layer is the most productive, full of plants, algae, invertebrates, fish, and more. You'll find lots of oxygen and lots of warm water fish species here like bluegills, perch, carp, and largemouth bass. Although cold water has a higher capacity to hold oxygen, the warm epilimnion actually tends to hold the greatest amount of oxygen because this is where the majority of oxygen producing plants live. The next layer down is the metalimnion. By definition, this is an area of rapid temperature change as you travel deeper. In the middle of summer, expect this area to begin somewhere between 15 and 25 feet down in most inland lakes. The part of the metalimnion where the fastest temperature drop occurs is called the thermocline. The thermocline in really large lakes can be much deeper because the wind has more time to travel across the surface and generate larger waves and circulation. You can find various cool water species like walleye, pike, and smallmouth bass living in the metalimnion where they can stay in their preferred temperature range. The bottom layer is the hypolimnion. This layer is pretty uniform in temperature, usually around 39 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's isolated from the other layers in terms of mixing. The cold temperature and low light availability restrict most aquatic plants and algae to the other layers of the lake, so very little oxygen is produced here. If a lake's hypolimnion contains a high level of oxygen throughout the summer, you can still find cold water species like lake trout and whitefish. The dissolved oxygen supply is limited until the layers can mix again, so cold water fish can die if the oxygen level gets too low before a mixing event happens. As the days get colder during the autumn season, the epilimnion loses a lot of its heat to the cold air above and it becomes more dense. Once it cools down near 39 degrees Fahrenheit, its density is similar to the water below and all of this water can once again mix. A day of strong winds around this time will push water across the surface and cause a circulation to develop in the lake, which is called a turnover event. This distributes oxygen-rich water from the surface down to the bottom of the lake and sends water from the bottom toward the surface. If the hypolimnion ran out of oxygen during the summer, this turnover event may come with a strong odor caused by products of decomposition that were accumulating near the bottom of the lake. In lakes that don't freeze in winter, there will be many mixing events since the water temperature is pretty uniform throughout the lake for many weeks or months. As the surface water continues to cool below 39 degrees, it again becomes less dense and stays at the top of the lake. In cold regions, the surface eventually freezes with a layer of ice and the coldest water is just below the ice. The temperature of the water actually increases from about 32 degrees near the ice to about 39 degrees near the bottom. Cold water fish species like trout, whitefish, and burbot will now travel throughout the entire lake. Warm water fish species like bass and bluegills and cool water species like walleyes will hang closer to the bottom where the water is warmer, but they'll be moving very slowly. Since the water is now isolated from the atmosphere, it can no longer receive oxygen from the air. A small amount of oxygen can still be produced by algae and aquatic plants if sunlight can penetrate through the ice. The amount of sunlight getting through depends on the clarity of the ice and the amount of snow cover on top. If the supply of oxygen drops too low before the ice melts, fish may die and this is called a winter kill event. In spring, the warm air and sunshine will melt the ice and warm the upper layer of water, once again bringing the water temperature to about 39 degrees and allowing mixing to occur. This sends oxygen-rich water down to the bottom again and may bring nutrient-rich water to the surface, which often stimulates a bloom of algae and zooplankton and lowers the clarity of the water for a while. As the water continues to warm, the cold water species will continue to move deeper, and the warm water species will hang out in the shallows where the water is warming the fastest. The lake will now continue to warm and eventually stratify into three layers again for the summer season. Lakes with tributary inlets or springs may have some areas of incomplete stratification due to the incoming water. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.